My name is Gothami Vamula, and I'm originally from India. Okay, um, by profession, I am a child welfare consultant and the founder and president of Color Me Safe, which is a family crisis management firm that specializes in providing guidance and solutions to families that are going through the CPS process. And when I say CPS, I mean child protective services. So I was there for about 10 years, decade, 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 and they took my department away from me, which was a very integral part of the department. It was a training department. And um, they either told me to take a demotion or leave. So I told myself, well, that's okay. I'm going to take my knowledge and expertise and started up my own consulting firm. And um, I did this because I felt there was a void in the community. There is a number of people that are misled by Child Protective Services. So my hope was to build a bridge between CPS and the families that we serve. And now, Color Me Safe is here, and it's not going anywhere. And I'm really, really excited about starting this new venture in my life. Basically, when CPS comes out to the home, you know, we all know that it's very traumatic, very, very traumatic for not just the children, but the family. And they don't know what to do. It's like dealing with the police. So what we do is we sit there and we help them navigate through the entire CPS landscape from the beginning of the investigation to the end of the investigation. So beside, instead of going to, a, to an attorney, they come to us. So, and we help them by providing those solutions to them, like what to do if they come out there, what kind of answers are you supposed to give them? What do you expect from them later on? Um, right now, <laughs> we're doing a whole lot of marketing. You can speak to your, speak to attorneys. We're on Twitter. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. And we do a lot of community presentations. So we're kind of all over the place and we're gaining momentum. It's a new concept that the community and attorneys are trying to understand, but, um, it's, it's doing well. My role in court is um, providing expert testimony. Because of the background that I've had at Child Protective Services, this provides a platform where I can help families and I can help um, attorneys understand what the child is going through. For example, if it was uh, a mother and a father going through a custody battle and there was abuse and neglect involved, I can actually kind of advocate for either side and tell them, hey, this is abuse and neglect. This child is not safe in the care of the father or the care of the mother. So I provide expert testimony. My uh, first case at CPS, first case, Tildy, I was part, I was an investigator in the special, the sexual abuse unit. It was a three-year-old rape case, and this sweet little baby was raped by three different men who escaped. I, I don't know what happened to them, but um, this three-year-old till this day cannot. She's not going to be able to bear kids, and she's traumatized for the rest of her life at the age of three. And that was my first case out of the academy, and it, it broke me, and I, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this. But to me, working at CPS wasn't a job. It was more of a calling. And even my job as a consultant now is more of a calling versus a job. When, <laughs> when we moved to Dallas in 2001, um, you know, 9-11 happened, and a lot of people were just out of work. And I called and put in an application, and they hired me. And my background, I have a double master's in clinical psychology and counseling, so I knew my calling was to always help people. I didn't go to medical school, so the next best thing was, hey, maybe I can go into therapy and counseling, and I can you know, share my views and help people that way. So I got hired the next day, and then I was there ever since, 10 years. You know, the word achievement to me can be taken in so many different contexts for so many different people. But I would say my greatest achievement thus far has been able to face and overcome adversity in my life and yet have a positive outlook on life. I think that's my greatest achievement. So you're gonna have to forgive me right here because I might get a little emotional. Um, anytime someone asks me that question, it just opens up a lot of <laughs> different emotions. Um, I would say my mom and my dad. Um, I'm a first generation Indian American. You know, both my parents came here in 1975. It's a whole different country then, to them. You know, the sacrifices they made, knowing a country that they known for such a long time, and then coming here, want to make a new life because it's the American dream, and do that for their children. You know, it's, it's so inspiring to me. And, they, until this day, Tilde, they still do so much for our relatives back home, you know, whether it's through money, you know, supporting nonprofit organizations there. They, they, they do it here, but they also do it there. 
so their roots and their culture still carries on and it is carrying on right now so they'll they'll all, they're they're my inspiration they're my heroes all the unresolved um, issues there are so many issues that need to be tackled and I want to make some sort of change or difference in my own little way and I think some of the issues that are happening in the world right now is what motivates me and what inspires me to go out there and make a change and hope for the best. Don't try to be, just be. Being an Indian American, I've had to fight and um, balance two different cultures and it's a constant tug of war. You know, here my parents want me to be something, here society wants me to be something, so there's a conflict there and what I want to do is I just want to be me. I want to do me. And I don't want to listen to anybody else. As long as I'm making appropriate decisions, then I just want to be me. My crazy blog, let's see. It's called um, Weedish Complexion. So I'm sure you're thinking, what is Weedish Complexion? <laughs> so Weedish is considered the color of my skin. So in India, this is how they kind of differentiate you. You're either dark, you're fair or you're Weedish. And this comes from the Indian dating sites, you know, such as like match.com. We have our very similar matrimonial and Indian dating websites. And one of the drop boxes is, are you Weedish? Are you fair? Or are you dark? I'm like, seriously? Wow. <laughs> so finding a suitable boy in my life has been a goal, not only for me, but my parents and the rest of the Indian community. So this all started at the age of 26. So I've gone through the roller coaster of going out on dates and everything, and they've provided me nothing but <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> What's happening here? So rather than being depressed, sitting in a corner, sulking, I try to, um, I try to take that and Put it out there in a positive way. So Weedish Complexion is a satirical blog about being a first generation Indian American woman and having to balance two different cultures in the pursuits of finding a suitable man. So that's what Weedish Complexion is about. And recently I've opened it up to all women of all ethnicities to talk about the things that they've gone through. You know, it's, it's given, it gives them the freedom to express what they're feeling, but in more of a positive, positive way. Right now, I'm really excited because we're in the middle of trademarking Weedish Complexion. I wish I could tell you why, but then there was no surprise later. But it's called WeedishComplexion.com. <laughs> so far, I've done everything, but if there's one thing that I haven't done is falling in love. And I'm at a stage in my life where I'm ready to find that individual. Not that I need somebody, but because I want somebody looking for someone to inspire me and complement my own qualities. So that's one thing I haven't done yet and eventually praying to God that it would happen one day. <laughs> so the pressure started as soon as um, I finished graduate school. The first thing was go to school, finish up school, and then try to find a boy so you can get married because that's the only thing in life left to do, right? So my parents and the entire Indian community would set me up and then 20 started at 26, 30 came, 35 came, and now I'm the age that I am. I'm 38 years old. And it's, it's been a constant struggle because they, they're trying to define what that person needs to be for me. But I want to define that for myself. It shouldn't, I shouldn't have to settle because everybody else wants me to settle. I want to be happy first within myself before I share that happiness with somebody else. And it's been a constant battle and um, it's hard. It's hard because society says and dictates, well, you need to do this by this age, you need to do this by this age. And then once that's done, it's something else kind of adds on. And it's been a constant struggle for me. And finally, I came to a point, I laid down the law. I'm not doing this for you, mom and dad. I'm not doing this for my uncles and aunts. I'm gonna do this for me. And when that time comes, you know, it's going to be great because I think you would value it so much more, the relationship that you're in. However, I come from a society, a community, where they could be a tad bit judgmental. And I think one of the obstacles that I've had to face being an Indian and unmarried at this age is, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. My happiness is important to me. And... 
I want to continue doing that before I share my life with somebody. Such a powerful, you know, International Women's Day was on Sunday and this is a topic that came up amongst my friends and I. And when I think of the power of woman, the essence of a woman, three words come to my mind and that's strength, hope, and change. And I think that is the essence of being a woman. The legacy that I want to leave to the younger generation is it's okay to defy societal pressures and go against the grain and forging your own path that could, also, that could lead to success and happiness. And that's okay. And always do what you want to do and not what somebody else says or dictates.